Hi, welcome to Robbie and Friends. My guest this week is Courtney Starr. Hi, yeah, so I'm Courtney Starr. Um, professionally, I work for Prolific Interactive. Uh, we are a mobile app agency. Um, mostly focused on iOS and Android, pretty much solely. Personally, I mostly work on iPhone apps. Um, so yeah, that's what I do. I'm a uh, product designer, so I'm on the design side of things. So that's what I do. This week, we are discussing our reflections on last month's Apple Keynote. In particular, our feelings about the upcoming new refresh of the Apple TV and the iPad Pro. Stay tuned. Next week, Courtney and I had a really interesting discussion about how we use the Apple Watch. And it made this episode a little long, so I had to cut it along with some stuff about the iPhone success as well. I hope you enjoy the show. So the iPad Pro is, oh, it just flat. I have the Apple website open right now for reference. Yeah, me too. <laughs> it's, it's thin, light, and epic. And, <laughs> and expensive. And really expensive. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I guess speaking of software in particular, I mean, like, I don't know. What did, what did they really say about the iPad other than that it's bigger? Um, I guess they demoed, you know, some of like the multitasking features. Those are pretty cool. Um, I mean, some this isn't software, but the, the four speakers seems kind of neat because iP- iPads are really nice for, for media consumption. Um, yeah. I only I mean, find myself doing that when I travel, and usually when I'm traveling, I'm just too occupied to watch a movie. But I do, yeah, four speakers will be nice. I think that's going to be, one of the, it's one of those things I'm not really anticipating, but I think it's going to be a really nice, pleasant surprise if I ever buy one. Mm-hmm. I think the... You know, selfishly, because it's so related to what I do, I, I thought it was amazing how much they talked about, you know, the Apple stylus and the, I can't quite call it a 3D touch display because they didn't outright say it, but it, I mean, it definitely sounds like it's pretty similar to the iPhone and that there's an extra level of sensitivity to pressure. Um, that seemed really, really cool uh, to me. And that's like the only thing that would drive me to get the iPad Pro because the reason I got my iPad Air like the major reason I got it was to to draw on. I really wanted to kind of move from sketching on paper to my iPad. That's kind of my my sketchbook is basically the last remaining piece of paper in my life, um, and I was really interested in gaining the benefits of having my sketches go digital. But when I got my iPad Air, you know, I I got um, I tried a bunch of styluses and and all of them felt like drawing with my elbow. So I like immediately stopped using using um, my iPad almost all together. I still read on it. Yeah. Um, Which ones did you try? Because I've tried a couple of them. I can't even remember them all at this point. I've tried like Pencil. I've tried some by, um, I don't know how to say it, Add On It. Add oh, on yeah. It. Yeah, John It or whatever. Yeah. Uh, yeah I, I never tried theirs. That I, I did buy a Pencil on sale recently, and I have to say I really do like the paper app that it is intended to work with. But yeah, it's it's not amazing. I, ha- I had the Wacom. Is it Wacom? I think it's Wacom. Wacom. But, you know. Yeah, I had their bamboo, which had a real pen on the other side of it, uh, <clears throat> which was, you know, again, not amazing, tolerable. I would use it, you know, I would use it really mostly as a pen, and then I would scribble on my iPad every now and then. Yeah. yeah it was kind of funny. I basically, I basically, I just went to Staples and just, <laughs> and just basically tore open all the packages and just went down the line and tried all of them. And we're like, it's all horrible. And I left the Staples and that was it. Yeah, they really all do suck. So, I mean, the, the, the Apple Apple Pencil, I I have I, I've read a couple things from some design professionals online that have led me to believe that what it's probably going to do well is is feel really nice and if they really nailed the feel of it like that's gonna really be compelling like if I if I I'm like all of, I have a lot of reservations about the new iPad but if I go into the store and it really feels awesome. To, to write on or draw on, that's going to be, it's going to be really difficult to walk out of the store with that one. Yeah, I think I'm extremely excited about the, the Apple Pencil. That's something I've been wishing they would do for a long time. The only thing, the only thing from Microsoft I've ever like pined for was the Surface Pro. Uh, my aunt has one and has a stylus that's like wicked, wicked good. And you can write, the thing that, that I've always wanted is to be able to like write small because when you, even with like the the uh, the pencil p- from uh, paper fifty three, like when you write with that, like you still, the fact that it's such a large nib means that you have to write extremely large, 
like kindergarten large and it's just like not useful to me because I'm trying to write ideas down next to a sketch and I can't fit anything but with the Surface Pro that I tried it's like it's like a really sharp point and you can write exact almost the exact same size you would write with a normal pen and I feel like the Apple Pencil will, will be like that um, which is really exciting so for me the main thing I want is be to be able to write smaller because the other the other styluses felt good like I, I felt like I was drawing naturally and I enjoyed you know the way it would like put a line on a page but I just didn't enjoy um, writing text with it because a lot of times you know for for what we do is it's very technical so like I'll be doing sketches um, you know of an interface and I need to make a note you know about something technical and I can't you know <laughs> I feel like everything they always write down in, in these like um, you know, videos like showing their stylus. It's like everything is always like 16 inches. And that's like the only thing they ever write is like a distance for some architectural plan they're doing. And I'm never doing that. I'm trying to actually write like a paragraph. So I feel like the pencil would be, the Apple pencil would enable me to get that precision, which would be really nice. Yeah, I hope it, I really hope it feels great. And that's going to be the toughest thing for me because if it feels awesome, it's going to be so tempting. Um, so yeah, so like the, the pencil looks pretty interesting, and then so like the, you, you're talking about multitasking. They had Microsoft come up on stage and demo uh, some of the the, micro, the Office suite working. You know, like with you can I guess you so you can run a full portrait iPad Air app on side by side. Correct. So you can run a portrait, you know, Microsoft Word alongside an Excel, which is, to me is exciting. I, I use iWork pretty, like I'm pretty happy iWork user. Um, but, you know, in education, people are still using Office. Mm -hmm. And I've had a lot of really frustrating problems with iCloud documents syncing. Like, it's just so bad. It's so <laughs> incredibly bad. It is. That I'm just like, you know what? The Microsoft apps look so much better than they used to. And I don't have to think about converting files um, I really do like the design of like pages and numbers, but I don't know. Every every now and then I go through a phase where I'm like, ah, forget iWork, and I just you know put put all the, you know the Microsoft productivity apps on my iPad's home screen and work like that. Mm -hmm. um, they have great Dropbox support too. Mm. Um, so yeah, I that was interesting. Do you do you think like like I have no doubt that anyone, even though most people are really comparing the iPad Pro to the Microsoft Surface. I, I'm pretty sure it's going to sell pretty well. Um, but I'm just really thinking, like, do I really want to... Like, because this is going to be a device that's probably... I think it's intended to replace a laptop. Mm -hmm. I think for most people, yeah. And I just don't know if I can think... I'm ready to think about an iPad like that. Like, I, like, I, I would still... I would love to have two side-by-side... Microsoft Office apps running on my iPad and being able to type on a keyboard when I'm traveling. Like, I would love to throw an iPad in my bag instead of a laptop. Mm -hmm. But I just think I would get mad not being able to use certain keyboard shortcuts and utilities that I've installed over the years. Or like being yeah. able to drag a photo from one app into another. Yeah, I think I definitely understand the market they're going for. I don't necessarily think maybe you or I or those, those individuals. Um, the thing I, I, I'm going to wait for probably is I, I can't imagine that the, you know, the next generation of iPad Airs will have the same screen as this. And that's what I want. Like I want, I like my form. I like the form factor of the iPad Air. The iPad Pro honestly looks a little bit too big for me. Um, I get, I feel like the form factor is, it's like just for, for professional use. Like I wouldn't want to use you know, a 12.9 inch screen sitting on the couch to read a book. It's like gigantic um, and also a little bit heavier. So I really want the iPad Air with 3D Touch and the Apple Pencil. That would be really exciting to me. Yeah, so I guess the, so the Apple Pencil, it's, it seems pretty clear that it's not going to work with anything right away except for the iPad Pro. See, I don't know about that. I mean, I can't say it's not going to do anything. I mean, it's got to be able to scroll something on the screen. Um, even if it's not the iPad Pro, like I would imagine it's still using the same touch that you would use with your finger or any other stylus. So I'm I'm still interested in getting the Apple stylus or the Apple Pencil um, and just using it on my Air. 
I know it won't be quite as good, but it's got to be better than anything I've used so far. So yeah, I had a really difficult time understanding what, what part of the sensitivity of the pencil is the iPad's display having pressure sensitivity and which part of it is the pencil itself having, you know, it's varying levels of pressure that can be applied to get yeah. different artistic results. Um, cause yeah, it's hard to tell. Yeah. And you know, you mentioned the, um, you mentioned the uh, the iPad Pro it being unclear whether or not it has the 3D touch that I, I guess we'll talk about in a few in a little bit. The you know the new iPhone is going to have this three basically three pressures that all you know can give you different productivity features. Um, like the hard press is going to be different than a light press. I mean, it mm -hmm. to me, it seems pretty unclear that the iPad Pro does not have that. I think it does because the reason why I would say I think it does is they used the same illustration in both demos, meaning they showed that one close up where you sort of like entered into the screen and then there was the glass on top and then another layer below and it was showing it was showing like light going through it that was sensing something. I mean it, it looked really similar. The only thing that was I can't remember it exactly. I don't if I can't remember if the iPad Pro when it was in that like in between state I can't remember if that top surface was looking like it was bending or not, um, but it, it seemed like it used the same illustration on the iPad Pro and the new iPhone 6s. Hmm. Yeah. See, I, I to me, I, I think on the website it doesn't say the word 3D Touch on the iPad's product page, but it does on the iPhone, and I, I feel like their branding for those features is typically pretty intentional yeah, I don't know why it's uh, yeah I mean it, it kind of does lead me to believe it might not be there but it also definitely seems like it is which is confusing yeah I'm kind of to me that's kind of a deal breaker I'm, a, I'm gonna probably get really into touching the iPhone screen harder to get different contextual options and sure. yeah I <clears throat> I can't imagine having an iPad that then I'm trying to hard press it and it doesn't do anything yeah, I'm already doing it to my phone like what you know once I got the Apple watch I already started like force touching my screen even before you know this recent announcement. Right. Yeah, like when on the Apple Watch, you can hold press harder to uh, when you're viewing your notifications to clear them all at once. Yeah, it's really nice. I've definitely tried to do that on this notification screen on my iPhone before. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I've also tried to reach on my iPhone for a digital scroll to scroll through an article <laughs> once or twice. Me too, for sure. Yeah. Uh, so, so the, I mean, what else do you think they can do with the iPad software to differentiate it from the iPhone software? I mean, okay, so you can run, you can now run two apps side by side at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, the, the new on display, key, you know, this keyboard has some stuff, like you can t use two fingers to turn the keyboard into a touch touchpad where you can like scroll with your cursor and stuff when you're editing text. Mm -hmm. That's, and I, that's really works very well. Um, I've been trying the beta of iOS nine on my iPad and that hmm. is really nice. I actually think that feature just got moved into the iPhone as well. It did. Yeah. It's, you can hard press the keyboard and then move and to be able to turn it into a trackpad and move the cursor. Oh, around. okay. So it's not two finger. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. So, I mean, what else do you think the iPad can, what, what would you add to the iPad's OS in the coming years to better differentiate it as a productive tool? Because to me, I, I see, okay, like running two apps side by side is awesome, but I'm still looking for a little bit more. Like it still seems to, like, for example, like, navigating like attaching a file to an email is still a really cumbersome task on ios mm -hmm. it requires many many taps um it's it's very slow like i'm just thinking like you know things things like dragging and dropping uh, files and and photos and you know from one app into another like that kind of stuff or just even having like a general temporary dumping ground like a desktop just to sort yeah. of work with stuff and move things okay. around visually like the ipad has none of that at all Mm -hmm. So, I mean, what do you think, I don't know, I think most people knew that eventually you were going to be able to run two apps side by side. What do you, I mean, what do you think the iPad, is there anything that 
the iPad Pro would that you can foresee happening that would convince you that maybe it is a laptop replacement down the road? Yeah, it's hard to say. One thing that I wish was was a thing that I've always wished was a thing um, that I thought they were actually going to announce was the one there was like one shot where someone was like typing on the keyboard and they were talking about how you know obviously it's like a it's like a full size keyboard now on the screen. I think it'd be really cool. Uh, this would be obviously you need to see how it felt. It might be terrible, but it'd be. I've always wanted to just rest my hands on the screen, and it'd be cool if you had 3D touch, where you actually had to like press a little bit hard on the screen to type to type the character. So in that way, you could just rest your hands on the keyboard like a normal keyboard. Does that make sense? Yes. I think that would be really neat, and it would actually make it feel way more productive if you could type quickly. You know, if you didn't want to get the the attached um, keyboard, it'd be really nice if you could just have your iPad, rest your hands on it, and start typing, and actually pressing a little bit would be cool. Yeah, I thought the same thing when, when I, because um, the new iPhone has this haptic engine in it. I'm, I think it would be really cool if, like, gently, see, but see, this would completely change how iOS worked. But the idea of the screen itself, like a, a tap, not even registering as any kind, anything at all, but like t touching the screen, but then moving your finger over a button would generate some sort of feedback that would let you feel like you're, you're hovering over a button. And then pressing a little bit harder would actually give you another type of feedback that would feel like pressing a button. Um, I think people's hands have adapted to the flexibility of a touch display that typing really fast would get really difficult if you required more pressure. Yeah, but at the same time, we're so used to providing pressure on a keyboard. Like a normal keyboard, we're used to, you know, mashing a keyboard down. Yeah, you're right. I don't know. That would be very interesting. I think something that would make, going back to your discussion about, it's kind of hard to just do simple things like just throw a file around. Um, I could see that improving kind of like, uh, I don't know, with, with some of these 3D touch elements, you know, I could see pressing hard on a uh, on like a photo or something and then you you enter into sort of like a mission control is that what it's called on the Mac I always forget all these names are um, mission control I think isn't no is it launchpad that shows you all of your apps well yeah something like that like it would show you some view really quickly like all the windows you have open and you could kind of like toss it over to another another program I could see something like that happening yeah that'd be very cool yeah, I still think it would be awesome if there was a Finder on the on the iPad. Well, you're getting kind of close to that with the new, I mean, iCloud Drive app. Yeah, it's not. It doesn't have enough flexibility with how you customize the way you view it. Sure. Yeah, but you're right. It's getting closer. So yeah, I, no, I think I think you're you're right about. I don't know. I, the I wait. I do really like the size of my iPad Air. Just just going back to that for a second. I, I do think like, especially if the iPad Air got some of the features of the iPad Pro down the road, which I'm pretty. I mean, I cannot imagine it will not. Um, but especially if they made a keyboard, the size of the iPad Air. That would be really interesting to me. The one thing that makes me think maybe this is something I want to think about more uh, in the near future is that uh, you know one of the things I'm using my iPad for now is for reading sheet music and a large iPad is just you know it obviously fulfills that role in a very nice way I mean you're, you're coming close to the full size of what a score would really look like and so that's kind of cool that would be cool Apple TV this will probably be the first one that I get. I've never owned an Apple TV. That surprises me a little. I know. I, I told you. I'm, sometimes I'm a little resistant to these things. I've never really been... It was kind of the same thing as like Fitbits and all that stuff. It was never... There was like a tipping point that hadn't been met for me with the Fitbit stuff where it was like, I don't really care that much about my steps. But when the Apple Watch had this like huge suite of stuff, it was like, okay, I care about my steps and my heart rate and all these other things. The same thing is kind of with the Apple TV. I never really cared that much about some of the stuff that it did because I'm not a huge TV person. But now that it's got like this overwhelming amount of cool stuff, I think this is definitely one that, that I would love to get. Yeah, we've had the Apple TV 2, and then I think we got the 3. And So what are your favorite parts about it? 
Uh, well, we we don't have cable, so it only it really has never made sense to use the TV except for as a device that runs apps. Ever since we cut the cord, um, so to us it is a, a way to show you know share photos with people who are in our house. Uh, it's a way to listen to music. It's a way to watch and rent movies. Um, it, it, but most of the time, it's just a way to watch TV that we're interested in through apps like Netflix, Hulu, and HBO. Uh, we, we're pretty picky about TV. We don't watch a lot of it, but we do have a couple of things that we really like and tip mostly like hour-long serial dramas. And yeah, I mean, a typical like way to decompress on an average weeknight might be to watch like, well, you know, this is, doesn't, is, is done now, but like Mad Men, an episode of Mad Men might be a thing that we would do. Um, and it just presents a really nice way of navigating all that stuff. And I think the new Apple TV is going to make it even easier. It's going to make the experience of searching for something a lot, you know, I mean, some of, the, some of the current frictions of the Apple TV are that it's like not a very well thought out device. Like you have to either use an iPhone app to like type in stuff when you're searching or you have to actually use the four way directional pad on the Apple TV remote itself to like one by one type in each character. Um, so it's got these weird things, you know, that are frustrating, like oh, what, your Netflix account needs to be, you know, you have to, like, reauthorize it? Well, now I've got to, like, look up my password in one password. Oh, it's, like, 30 characters long because I made it a really yeah. good password. No, thank you. Like, we'll just not watch TV tonight is what we decide. Play cards instead. Yeah. Yeah, I think they're going to nail, they're nailing a lot of stuff with this new Apple TV. I mean, the remote looks great. It looks like something I will not be motivated to lose in my couch. Um, it's looks really slick. Um, I'm very excited about being able to do universal search. Like I would like to watch Mad Men and now it says, okay, okay, great. Here it is. And you can watch it on Netflix, iTunes, Hulu. Um, you know, and, and then, you know, all that contextual stuff you can do, like having a a Siri button on the remote sounds really great. Mm -hmm. Um, being able to just, you know, dictate by voice what you want to do instead of typing it with a remote sounds awesome. Uh, it sound, it seems to me like the I'm not 100 percent sure, but like that the remote also does not have a time delay for Siri to activate. It seems like you're holding it down while you're talking and then letting go. Hmm. Maybe, maybe I didn't I'm even wrong. think about that. I didn't even think about that. I don't know. It's it seems to like because the TV has to respond. I think doesn't the TV must have to like be get softer while you're dictating? Maybe hmm. not. Yeah, you would think it would. Because the way they demonstrated it is it already shows Siri on the bottom of the screen, but it doesn't interrupt the content you're interacting with. Like if there's a movie playing and you ask, who is she? It pulls up like what appears to be like IMDB results of the cast at the bottom of the screen without actually stopping the movie. Yeah, that makes sense. I'm sure it goes. the volume just goes down to an appropriate level, though. But that's kind of actually that's two interesting things that if that thing about the remote holding it to talk rather than holding it to initiate it and then letting go like that's something there's some it's funny when Apple like takes a product like Apple TV and introduces really new innovative ideas that would actually be really great on their better selling products. Like, for example, a Siri that does not occupy the entirety of the screen would be amazing on iPhone. Hmm. That's interesting. Like, I hate using driving directions on it, and then my next turn is coming up as soon as I'm asking it to remind me to get milk on the way home, and then I miss my turn. Yeah, that is turn. kind of dominant. Like, there's no reason it has to take up the whole screen. That's crazy. Hmm. Now that I think of it, the mic is in the... Is it in the uh, the remote? Yeah, the, mi- is the mic in... is in the remote. So maybe it doesn't... The volume maybe doesn't have to go down that far because it's close to you. Right. Yeah, I'm really super stoked, too, that the remote is going to control the power input and volume of your TV. I mean, it's going to essentially it's going to replace all my other remotes, which is great because we got we got some Samsung quote smart TV. And one of the things I hate most is is the remote. I just can't stand 
I don't know anything about it. Like the the three little buttons on the top. I'm sure you've seen this remote. It's got like Netflix, Hulu, and and something else that I never use. And it just bothers me that there's like branded buttons on a remote. I'm like, that's not what a remote is for. <laughs> <laughs> that would kill me. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. We we have a, a Logitech remote that is uses that really shady technology um, to basically like route all of our electronics together. So it's like you can program it so that when you hold down the first button, like Apple TV will turn on and then HDMI input will switch to the one that Apple TV is hooked up into. So it it basically does a string of like three or four necessary events to get. Mm-hmm you up and running with whatever you want. Like the second button is programmed so that it'll turn off the Apple TV, change the input to the next one, and then turn on your Wii U. Wow. And it's cool, Impressive. except for it doesn't always work all the time. Yeah. Which is like the one thing a remote should do. So looks like the Apple TV remote will alleviate this concern. I was just thinking about Apple TV. I was just kind of like thinking about it the night after... Um, you know, the announcement, and I was like, how do you play and pause? And I, like, immediately pull up a web browser and looked at it, and I'm I'm really glad they have chosen the buttons they have, like a play and pause button, like, right on the screen. Um, I just think they they chose really nice buttons for, like, volume and and play and pause and Siri and menu. I think there's, like, the perfect amount of buttons on there. Yeah, Siri gets its own button, which is cool. Oh, and the other thing I was going to say is that that it seems that this remote has that uh, could be brought to other platforms is if if i'm correct that you have to just hold the button to talk versus and you can talk right away is that it really sometimes bugs me that i have to wait like and this is like major first world problem here but like the the wait the lag time of holding the siri button down on my watch or phone is really bothersome when i'm trying to just get a thought out of my head really quick yeah i've seen a lot of people screw that that one up actually where they think it's already listening and, and then it's not and then it catches half of what they say and then it messes it up and they have to redo it. I see that happen a lot, just like out in the world. Yeah, I would not, I, it would never happen, but I would not even mind if Apple added an extra a button for Siri on every device. Well, that's, that's a big big step there. Don't, don't put any more buttons on my iPhone. Yeah. <laughs> Careful It now. would never happen. I'm just saying like if, if it works that way, that you can just start talking. Yeah, no, I agree that the buttons are appear to be very wisely chosen. Um, volume up and down, play, pause, menu. I like that menu is positioned right underneath the touchpad because it's a very, very common button for navigating, which the touchpad will also be. Um, so what's that TV one? Is that like on-off, essentially? I don't know if it's on-off. It looks, it implies... Yeah, that yes, it is. Um, I would think it would take you to the home screen, but that's what the menu button does on the current version of Apple TV. Hmm. Curious. Yeah. So like with the with the pencil, I, I think it's going to be nice to, this remote is looking like it's going to really just respond way better than any of the other touch surfaces that can con- currently be con- used to control Um an Apple TV like the I like the iOS remote is is decent but it clearly has like one person at Apple who's writing on, right working on it um, it's just a little flimsy and doesn't get much love and swiping to select content is really cumbersome like you pretty much are always gonna like if you're just trying to select from a grid of movies and you want to move one over you're pretty much gonna move two over if you try and then if you like or, or it's not going to respond at all, to which you're going to like swipe harder, and then it's going to scroll like six movies over. <laughs> so the, the words they used to describe the remote in the keynote were fluid and fast. So hopefully that's true. Yeah, the, the thing that looks interesting is I was, I was really observing the, um, the presenter's hand as they were you know, navigating the screen. And maybe this is, uh, I don't, since I don't have an Apple TV, maybe this is something that's already been established, but... It was kind of the opposite of the phone, um, or it kind of reminded me of, you know, when, I forget which operating system it was, maybe it was like Mountain Lion or something, where they introduced the natural swiping on the, on the uh, or natural scrolling on the mouse, Yeah. versus like the previous version where you had like a wheel, um, they kind of like reversed that, uh-huh. 
it kind of seemed like one of those things where I was watching the person swipe and to make the selection, you know, to go, like if they were on the left movie and to go to the right movie, they would swipe their finger from left to right. Whereas on an iPhone, if you were swiping a list of movies, you would swipe from right to left to like move, to physically move the group of movies. Is that how it is on the Apple TV remote right now? If the iOS app remote, yes. You, you yeah. move your finger right to move, to move the selection. And it doesn't feel weird? No, because I think the metaphor is not that you're scrolling, it's that you're moving the selection over to the next one. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, because that was something I was really thinking about. I was like, is that going to feel weird? Because I'm so used to seeing a list and like, you know, grabbing where my eye is and then moving the list. I think if you think about it more like, like the currently selected thing is like a target and you're sort of just moving the target around the screen. Gotcha. Yeah. That's a good, that that's a good thought. Um, I mean, what kinds of apps do you think are going to be good on the TV? Yeah, that's a great question because uh, I think the thing that I'm personally most excited about about the Apple TV is actually developing apps for it. I'm like, I've already like made it very clear at my company, like I want to work on an Apple TV app. Um, and I think the, I think some of the really cool apps that are going to be made are going to be, you know, companies that we've heard about for a long time. Like for example, you know, in New York, we live, we live by a lot of media. I'm like, I would love to, to design an app for CNN where it's like, you know, I could so easily see, you know, let's say you bring up the CNN app or whatever, any news station app and you can swipe something and now you can access like top 10 stories of the day and, and, now all of a sudden they kind of do, I could see Apple TV doing for TV what the iPhone did for voicemail, where like it was kind of revolutionary that you could listen to any voicemail you wanted like out of order. Remember that like that was the first time you could look at a list, see who it was, actually see who it was from before you listened to it and choose to listen to one out of order. Like that was a really cool thing at first. Um, and I could see Apple TV kind of removing this idea that live TV, it just like, if you miss it, you miss it. Um, it'd be really cool, you know, at the end of the day to go in and just see like a top 10 stories from the day from a traditional news source. You know what I mean? Like we're used to being able to pick shows now from, from network shows, but we still haven't been able to really do that so much with like news. And I think that'd be really cool to be able to do that with news. Yeah, like almost the vi like the f taking something like an RSS feed or even just like the the first page of the New York Times and being able to like just sort of browse top stories that are tailored t towards you and then but selecting it you're watching it instead of reading it. Yeah, I mean that's like that's really cool cuz it's kind of bringing TV into this realm that we already are so used to but you know it's amazing that it hasn't happened yet, you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the, it's kind of like the way that you do that now is kind of, it's just sort of advertised. Like if you go to like YouTube and there's, you know, like a really major event has happened and that YouTube is like, you know, promoting, then you'll see, you'll see it there, you know, when you log in. Or if you're like on, you know, New York Times and maybe some like a, a top story will be at the top. But uh, yeah, there's no way to sort of customize which apps are feeding you which things. Uh, you know, I'm not like really, I don't follow a lot of sports, but that MLB app looks crazy awesome that they demonstrate. Yeah, I was, <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. Like, I don't like watching sports, but I was like, all right, maybe I'll be a baseball fan now just because of the technology. <laughs> <laughs> it was awesome. Like that kind of app-like thinking, like, no, this is not just a linear tube, you know, that's channeling one, you know, video and audio feed to you. Like you can watch two baseball games at once. You can check scores and stats while you're watching two games. Like that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, I think what Apple TV will will do is, we'll have lots of these like, oh yeah, why hasn't it been like that moments? You know, where, you know, you start it just a second ago. You're talking about, you know, if there's a big event, yeah, you can go find it on YouTube. Like, yeah, that makes sense to me on, in like computer world. Like I would think to myself, oh, this event happened. I'm going to search toward in Safari and probably click on a tap on a YouTube link. But it makes so much more sense to do that on a TV. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think, I think it'll provide a lot of neat opportunities for the, for the TV stations to change. Like news, I don't, I don't like watching the news, but I, I would be enthralled to, to design a news app though and to actually 
change the experience of news because news is obviously important, but I just don't really like the whole, you know, you got to turn it on at 7.30 a.m. And, and go through all these obnoxious things like some band that I'm surprised got themselves out of bed at 8 a.m. And, and played. And like, I don't want that. Like, I just want, I just want to find the actual news that I'm interested in or the actual people that I'm interested in. Like, it would be really neat to be able to ac- you know, access a menu of, of who is related to the station. Like, I think that the stuff that Anderson Cooper does is typically interesting. So imagine bringing up, um, you know, a news app and being able to kind of, like, look at the roster and be like, yeah, let's see what Anderson Cooper's been up to and then watch, watch something in that way. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's awesome. That's it's really cool to think about because, of course, some of this is and I, they kind of address that in the keynote. Like, of this is how we interact with our technology today. Why not in front of a TV? Uh, you know, like when we want to watch a video, we just type it in and search for it, and there mm-hmm. it is. Yeah, I, I, what you're saying makes me wonder. Like, how long do you think it's going to be until the Apple TV interface has something like a notification center? Only what you're seeing is when you open launch your Apple TV, is you're seeing top news stories tailored for you for the day. You're seeing your favorite TV shows that have aired only now they're available to watch on the Apple TV. But like if one of them is something you watch on Netflix, now that is going to take you into the Netflix app or maybe a new show you subscribe to on iTunes has aired. And now you can, you know, that's going to take you straight into iTunes, but basically just a roll up of, of, you know, video content. Yeah. I think that kind of that fluid, exchange between your devices is definitely what it will do and I think the interesting thing is it will it will happen in a way that at least people that are new to the technology like just younger people it will happen in a way that like no one ever notices it you know it's like well yeah why isn't it like that you know what I mean yeah it's gonna be very cool to see I think those are my favorite moments when when something just happens so that's like actually pretty a a big deal but you just kind of do it without noticing. And then maybe later, if you actually choose to stop and think about it, you're like, wow, that's actually kind of crazy that, you know, I just answered a call on my watch. You know what I mean? Like, I don't even understand how, what just happened, but I just did that because I didn't have my phone next to me. But all of a sudden, my wrist told me I had a call and I answered it, you know? Yeah, that's very cool. It makes me wonder um, two things. It makes me wonder, first of all, why they decided to not ship a FaceTime app on the Apple TV. Hmm. Oh, wow, that seems kind of cool. Well, I guess it's because there's there's no camera. Yeah, but if they can fit the kind of camera they can fit into a tiny little iPhone. Well, I guess it would be... Hmm, people mount them in all sorts of weird places, though. It's not really, like, front and center all the time. I guess. I guess so. Like, maybe you put your Apple TV in a wall, or maybe it's behind your TV. I don't know. See, I don't think it would be like intuitive necessarily. I think people would expect the camera to be above the screen like it is on all their other things. Right. But you're far away enough from it that it shouldn't matter. If you're staring into the TV's screen, the, the camera on the Apple TV, no matter where it's placed, should at least give the other viewer the impression that you're looking at them. That would be pretty cool. It would be pretty epic to see like something actually large like that. Right. Yeah, I think it would be really cool. Um the other thing it reminds me of is you're talking about like using the the watch to answer calls. Um, you know, that's using this new handoff feature where you can like pass activities from one Apple device to another. Um, what do you, they said that that was going to work with games on the Apple TV, which is crazy to me because because what that what I interpret that to mean is that if a developer decides to make a universal app that is a game that you buy it and it runs on Apple TV iPad and iPhone, it sounds like what they're saying is you can be playing a game and on your iPad and then go to your Apple TV, boot up that game, and then it'll, it's going to start you right in the exact place that you were on the iPad. Yeah, that's, that's what I gathered. I, what I gathered, though, was that it wasn't necessarily... No, yeah, I think it, it just kind of seems like Game Center is like saving your place and opening it in a new place. Yeah. Hmm. That does seem pretty cool, though. Kind of crazy. Again, one of those things that kind of seems like, to, you know, to some kid, they're going to be like, well, yeah, why, why doesn't it work like that? But to us, it's like, what? That's actually pretty amazing. I've been waiting for that for a long time. Yeah, I, it makes, actually, I, I, I will avoid for purposes of this conversation uh, talking about this at too much length, but I'm really intrigued by 
how this how Steam has influenced this in more of the hardcore PC gaming area. Hmm. But just this notion of like, of course, when you play a game on a mobile device and then move to another device, your game should be saved. Hmm. Like, that's just how everything works these days. So you mentioned the notification center thing. I thought I remember seeing a notification in the demo. Huh. What was the notification? I can't remember, but I remember seeing it. And I, I remember like... Like, it still had the two little buttons on the bottom, and one of them was, like, pre-selected, so it was, like, really obvious that maybe you just, like, press the remote, and it, like, does does the thing. Maybe, yeah. I know that there's a, they said there's a weather app. Huh. I don't know. Oh, that's going to be really cool, too. Is, oh, I wonder if third-party developers can take advantage of those contextual menus. Because it seems clear that Apple is, like, when you do that thing where you ask Siri, who's in this movie... And then it pulls up on the bottom of the screen a list of people who are in the, on the film. It, it seems like, wouldn't it be cool, like, I, I'm thinking about, like, IMDb making an app. So that when you're, like, arguing with your spouse over, like, what other movie that person was in, you can, like, pull up IMDb, but without actually stopping the content. I thought it was from IMDb, the content. Yeah, but it's like an Apple, you know, it looks like it's Apple designed. Gotcha. So yeah, okay. I see what you're saying. So you're you're saying you would you would like to plug in whatever you wanted into a certain space. Yeah, I guess. Or like, even if I just wanted to like look at a photo or something, like, how does the Apple TV have a picture-in-picture picture mode, like the iPad does now, where the the video feed stays playing in a corner of the screen? I'm not sure. Huh. Yeah, that would. It seems like an obvious solution to that kind of problem. They didn't mention it in the keynote, though. All I know is for the price, this is definitely going on a, on a gift list for me. Oh yeah, I you know I. Some yeah, it to me like it's and it's right at that sweet spot of like impulse buy. I mean, two hundred dollars is a little bit more than impulse buy for most people, but like it's it's pretty close to something that you don't have to really think. Like if you're in a Best Buy, on a Friday night and you just got paid, like it's not that <laughs> difficult to say no to well it's 100 i thought it was 150 100 well the, yeah there's like a 64 gigabyte model and a 34 gigabyte so i was wondering about that what are you storing on there i'm not even I, that, that part didn't make sense to me i guess apps uh yeah i don't know why you would necessarily need the larger one though i i could not fathom like what is being locally stored on there well definitely not any content other than apps that i can think of i mean the photos are in the cloud music is in the cloud um, all of the video services are streaming, like Netflix and all of them. So, I mean, mm -hmm. your iTunes movies and TV shows are in the cloud. So, yeah, just games. So, I'll definitely get the $150 version because I don't, I don't imagine using very many apps. I would just use most of the core ones. Right. Yeah. We'll have to see. It's going to be very cool. I am I am excited. I've not I've literally not even cared about Apple TV ever until now and now I'm like super excited. Yeah. That's cool. Very cool. Okay, so like I said, I had to cut this episode a little short to keep it a reasonable length. Stay tuned next week for more of our discussion on the Apple Watch. See you then. <laughs>